Hi, my name is Audion Paxson. I'm a product manager here at NetGate. And today we're going to be talking about the newest addition to the family of NetGate security gateways, the NetGate 6100. Um, and I've asked Fraser Newland, our vice president of industrial design, to help with this guided tour. Uh, Fraser, before we get started, do me a favor and talk a little bit about what you do at NetGate and what exactly is an industrial design? Sure. Uh, industrial design combines art and engineering to create and manufacture a new products. Um, in short, I'm the guy responsible for shepherding new NetGate hardware from concept to market launch. Thanks, Fraser. Let's jump right in and start talking about the specs of the 6100. You got it. Uh, the 6100 is a desktop appliance, but it's packed with a lot of goodies usually reserved for rack mount type appliances. Let's start with what's under the hood. It uses the same reliable Intel Atom C3558 processor that we use in the 5100 and the 7100. It's a quad core 2.2 gigahertz processor with integrated QAT and AES and I and gives you better crypto performance. We also included eight gig of DDR4 memory and we're gonna be offering two storage options, one with 16 gig EMMC on board and another with 128 gig NVMe SSD. All right, so Fraser, um, that covers what's under the hood. And what does that drive in terms of WAN and LAN ports? Can you talk about that? Yes, the 6100 can deliver over 18 gigabits of L3 routing across eight independent ports. In fact, uh, I think the variety of the ports is one of the defining characteristics of the 6100. Um, I'll talk you through the NIC ports that make this such a flexible appliance. Um, Let's start with the one gig combo ports on the far left side. Right. The first NetGate product to receive a combo port was the 2100. A combo port is the combination of a single RJ45 Ethernet port tied to an SFP port. Now, the RJ45 and the SFP can't be used simultaneously, but the user can choose between fiber or copper Ethernet. We've built the 6100 with two combo ports, which gives the user a lot of flexibility. For example, a user can run dual WAN and have one fiber and one copper connection. So to the right of those combo ports, we see the 10 gig SFP cages. This is where some of those rack mount system features start to show up in the desktop. Previously, the NetGate 7100 was where one would see higher speed fiber ports like this. Next to those are four two and a half gig RJ45 ports that are equipped with Intel i225 NICs. Now that's uh, that's pretty cool because that could take advantage of you know a growing number of network devices on the market that are equipped with two and a half gig interfaces, such as uh, network attached storage boxes and even switches. So that's really great. Exactly. Speaking of switches, what a lot of our users are going to find exciting about these two and a half gig ports is they're not switched. So they don't fight each other for bandwidth. Now I understand why you said the variety of ports is one of the defining characteristics. Um, this is exciting and uh, it certainly is, it makes it very flexible. Can you talk a little bit about the cooling? Yes, the 6100 has the power and features of a rack mount system like our 7100 1U, but we've packed all that performance into a desktop. I'm a car, a bit of a car guy, and if Carol Shelby was building an appliance, it would be the 6100. An appliance this powerful will normally require one or more cooling fans. So look at our 7100. The 6100 does not. We built the 6100 around the same design cues and engineering as the 2100 and 3100 desktops. 
The 6100 has a, a large die cast aluminum base, which serves as both the system chassis and the heat sink for the board. Die casting allowed us to place the heat sink material precisely where we wanted it to optimize thermal performance. This is one of the big reasons we don't need the fans. And if you're looking at the unit, the airflow on the 6100 runs through a large notch channel in the base plate. You can see it from the rear view below the NIC ports. The air flows through the heatsink fins and then up through the chassis and out through the vents in the lid. It's very efficient. Okay, so we've talked about uh, what's under the hood, um, all the available ports and the unique cooling design, which by the way, I thought was fascinating. So thank you for going into some of those details. Um, sure. I'm keeping track here. There's a few things on the sides that you haven't covered yet. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a few I should highlight. On the right side rear, you'll find two USB 3.0 ports that are useful for tasks like flash drive installs and interfacing with UPS backup power systems. There are also two recessed push buttons next to the USB. Similar to our rack mount systems, one button is for power and one button is for resetting the system. So a nice thing is with one push of the power button, the user can trigger a graceful shutdown of the system. Well, that's uh, that's convenient. And it's better than uh, yanking the power cord, right? Yeah, a little bit, a little more elegant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what else? On the back, next to the WAN and LAN ports, we've added a Cisco style console port with micro USB and RJ45 connections. This port is a nice touch for IT professionals that commonly use the, these pale blue Cisco console cables. The interface will auto detect which cable is active. If you don't have a Cisco style cable handy, we're including a micro USB cable with each 6100 system. So you can have two cables plugged in, but it'll be able to detect which one is you're actually trying to use. Correct. Excellent. So the day that we announced the 6100, we got a lot of really good, good feedback, but we immediately got a few interesting questions. And one of the questions that uh, came in uh, right away was, what's behind the little panel on the right side? It is the right side, I believe, but they're asking about what's behind that little hidden panel. Yeah, for everyone who asks to know what is hidden behind the little panel, well, here you go. There are two sets of dual SIM slots, and those are tied to M2 card slots on board. And those M2 slots could be used in the future for LTE radios. Those dual SIM cards would be used to connect a single LTE radio to multiple carriers. Next question. What's on the inside that people are going to want to know about? There's several really cool provisions. We already mentioned the M2 slot that could be used for an LTE radio. We use one of those for the 128 gig variant of the 6100. Plus, there is a PCIe slot, mini PCIe slot, for the addition of Wi-Fi in the future. Cool, so those are just standard M2 slots? Uh, not exactly. Okay. I said, I said provisions earlier. Right. We wanted to ensure that the 6100 can support future technology like Wi-Fi 6, 5G, and high-speed NVMe solid-state drives. The M2 slots are configured to provide the widest set of options for future NetGate products as the radios and drivers are developed and tested. Got it. Okay, okay. There are very few cards currently available that will work correctly in the internal slots on the 6100. 
That is why we don't recommend customers open the 6100 and try and install cards on their own. They could inadvertently damage the board by trying to use cards that the board isn't designed to support. Okay. Okay, good to know. Now you mentioned NVMe, so I could use one of those slots to increase my available storage? I wouldn't recommend trying that. The 6100 M2 slots will support high-speed NVMe drives. However, the physical slot is B key and typical off the shelf NVMe drives are M key. Therefore, the only drives you can use there are B plus M key. They're not terribly commonly available. That's why we make two variants available. One with 16 gigabytes of storage and another one with 128 gigabytes of storage. Yeah. And for a hundred bucks, you know, really installed, loaded with PFSense plus all ready to go out the box. I don't think you're going to do much better. Frazier, you've talked about desktop use several times, but you haven't mentioned the wall mount options and how that works. Can you talk a little bit about that? Right. If you look closely at the sides of the system, mm -hmm. you'll see we've hidden some mounting holes in with the venting. The wall mounting kit comes with stainless steel screws that thread directly into the heavy aluminum chassis, and those secure the powder coated sheet metal wall brackets. The brackets are designed to keep the system far enough from the wall to ensure proper cooling airflow. Okay, so we got a lot under the hood. We got a ton of WAN and LAN port flexibility. We got provisions for the future. Um, and now I'm gonna talk a little bit about performance because that's one of the key things people care about. Yeah. Um, the performance specs are on our website, but for this video, I'm gonna use this graphic uh, representation of the same data, the way everything's side by side, and it's just you know an easier way to talk to it. And earlier, Fraser, you talked about over 18 gigabits of uh, throughput when you talked about all the ports. I think you said across all the available ports, right? And here's yeah. where that comes from. If you look at the top and you look at a layer three forwarding performance using iPerf three traffic, 6100 delivers 18.7 uh, gig uh, gigabits per second of throughput, which is really impressive for you know uh, for for this type of a device and uh, for the footprint and everything. Now, and just below that, we have firewall, NAT, and IPsec VPN performance, and all of these are are, are also really great and um, and especially for you know in this class of product, um, that's uh, those are impressive numbers. Now, all yeah. those are using iperf 3 traffic, which a lot of vendors use for their throughput, and it's the type of traffic that's uh, often used by speed test sites. So we provide those for comparison. Um, a more realistic measuring stick is actually going to be the lower uh, grouping there, the iMix traffic. And the iMix traffic includes a mixture of multiple packet uh, sizes across the system simultaneously. So it's much more realistic uh, um, representation of what you might see um, in most use cases. So if you look at the performance of the 6100 using iMix traffic, it's still really impressive. Now, I'm gonna note that all of these were done using PSSense Plus, uh, version 2105 specifically. Um, we do plan on adding support for Tensor software on the 6100, and I'm really looking forward to sharing those performance numbers soon. So that covers most of the, that covers all the specs, the feeds, the speeds, and, but what we need to talk about is the pricing and where does it fit across uh, all of our other options. So Fraser, where does the 6100 and the two variants that you mentioned fit in the Nikkei lineup? The 6100 tops the lineup of our desktop appliances. And we have two options, one with 16 gig of storage at 699 and one with 128 gig of NVMe storage and it's just $100 more. It actually combines some of the best features of the 5100 and the 7100. Like the 5100, it has four independent LAN ports, but they're running at two and a half gig instead of one gig. And like the 7100, it has 10 gig SFP plus ports. It really does include all the power and flexibility of a rack mount in a desktop format.
It does indeed, for sure. Fraser, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, to give me the guided tour of, uh, of our newest family member. I, I know you um, personally have worked really hard over the past year to help bring this to market. And especially and there's a whole cast of other people uh, at NetGate that has made this possible. Um, but uh, um, all the work, especially given all the supply chain challenges resulting from the pandemic, um, this is quite an accomplishment that I'm sure you're uh, you're proud of and excited to, to see um, hit the market. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of this. Uh, I'm really excited to see how people are going to like these. And yeah, it's been it's been a long year, <laughs> more than a year. So yeah, uh, exciting to finally get this thing off the ground and uh, out into customers' hands. Well, the feedback as soon as we announced it from customers and partners uh, has been very positive. So um, um, this is a uh, nice work and uh, thanks again, I appreciate it. Um, anybody yeah. interested in purchasing or learning more about the Netgate 6100 can go to netgate.com or reach out to us directly and talk to one of our experts if you have any questions. Uh, we'll, we're here to help and uh, thank you all for watching.